<clears throat> Obviously, we lost uh, Liam Scales and Troy Parrott, but um, we've Ryan Manning has come in. He had a minor procedure at at, uh, at his club, and thankfully, look, it was a watching brief to see how um, he was uh, progressing. And thankfully, um, it's all gone well for him. And he joined up with us yesterday, and uh, obviously, he'll be into the into the squad straight away. And uh, touch wood, everything else is uh, all fitting, fighting well. I know we spoke earlier on the week, but it's maybe been a full week now. How has the, the week been for you? First week in the job? Yeah, amazing. Really, really good. But I think that's helped by the support staff I've had around me too. And ultimately, um, the players, I think they're the key to it. So if they're uh, buying into it and obviously showing the desire and attitude, application to uh, be aggressive and take things on and show that in the training. and But obviously... The, it comes to the crux of it now in terms of picking the team and um, looking forward to the game as well. I know you said earlier on the week you have got a team selection in your own head, and you know the players well, but has anybody surprised you this week? No, no, look, no one surprised me. Look, I know the, the group well. Obviously, the staff um, got eyes on some of the players, obviously, uh, for the first time in the flesh, shall we say. And um, look, it was, as I mentioned, everyone's been obviously. Uh, a, f a freshness to it, in, in, shall we say, in terms of um, seeing a couple of new staff, a couple of new players in the squad as well. Um, you have that freshness to us and look a relaxed atmosphere, but also a proper um, learning curve as well in terms of what we're going to be looking for to do the job against Belgium. Obviously, you've had some really proud days in the green jersey. Just where will tomorrow race when you... Takes that yeah, right up there. It has to be um, an incredible honour when you um, manage in your country um, to get the chance to represent um, Ireland from under 15 onwards um, at all the levels, and then captain your country as well. And now to get the chance to be involved coaching with the 21s, coaching with the senior team, and now being a manager, it's um, amazing. And one, one, myself and the family are really proud of. Thank you. Josh, can I ask you um, how you're looking forward to this Belgium game? You were involved the last day, two all draw. Um, what did you learn from that about the Belgians? Do you think? Yeah, uh, first and foremost, I think we're all, all, all really looking forward to the game. Um, it feels like it's been a long time since since November, so any time we get to meet up as a group again um, is always great, and it's been a brilliant, brilliant week. Obviously, working under the, the, the new manager and his staff. Um, we've all really enjoyed it. We know again, like you said, touching on the, on the game we, we played against Belgium before, we know that they've got, got top quality players. It's going to be a tough test for us. Um, but yeah, the, the focus is on, on what we can bring to the game. We're confident going into the game that we've, we've worked on a good game plan throughout the week. Um, we know how, how good of players we have in the squad and, and we're looking forward to, to putting that into practice tomorrow night. Glenn Whelan is one of the coaches added to the coaching ticket by, by John. Um, has he been chatting to you in particular about that midfield role? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's been, been great to have Glenn in, as, as well as all of the other staff as well. Um, yeah, Glenn was part of the squad when I first came into the squad under, under Mick McCarthy. So to, to see him again and, and have him back in and, and get little pointers throughout the week on, on, um, on the midfielder's role within the within the game plan for the team. Um, it's been great and yeah, just trying to soak up as much of the advice and, and knowledge that, that Glenn and all the staff have and, and hopefully, like I said, put that into practice tomorrow. He's been, try he's he's been trying to tackle the midfield or something. <laughs> <laughs> you have to rein him in a bit, but yeah. Matt, the lads have avoided him. Yeah. Because Glenn's role was uh, sometimes an unsung one in a way, like protecting the back four, keeping the, keeping the ball moving. Yeah, definitely, I think, um, yeah. Look, having trained with Glenn and, and seen him play um, close up, I know that, that he had much more than that ability-wise. Um, but sometimes I think the, the biggest compliment you can give to, to players like Glenn is you probably notice more when he's not playing the job that he does for the team. Um, the role that he carries out um, was always fantastic. And yeah, someone that, that I always watched and tried to learn from. And, and um, yeah, it's been, like I said, it's been great to have him around the squad this week. John, can I ask you, when, when will you pick your team and when will you tell the players? 
And yeah, the players will will know today um, at some stage uh, what the team will be. Um, I think it's important that, and then you can obviously focus down on a few more finer details, shall we say? And then um, look, as I said, it's that's where you come to the crunch time in terms of final preparation, final details, and then um, everyone on board because that's what obviously we spoke about right from day one in terms of the two games. Plenty of players playing, plenty of substitutes being needed to finish the game just as strong as you start it. Because um, look, the good thing is there's good players in form as well, so it's a nice problem to have in a few positions. And did, you, did you just one last one? Did you think at all of maybe going to be a diva today for some of the players who, like for like Sammy or Finn, who haven't actually played there? No, we did. We spoke about it, but look, it's one of them um, in terms of the plan and preparation side of things. It just fits in better to. Stick to the routine of uh, of Abbottstown. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Hey John, um, hey, I saw one of the videos that went out during the weekend. Was a picture of this in playing with the, for the yeah. team, and you were saying afterwards that it was good to get a younger band in for sort of a new younger generation, hmm. and maybe not. I don't know, maybe Brian was looking for Christy Morrison. <laughs> uh, how different is this? Like what's twenty three years probably since you came in to the squad first? Yeah. When you look at these younger lads. How different? A group are they? How, how, how different are they around the hotel than, say, the crew you came in with? Yeah, but that's just obviously younger people in general, isn't it? Now and obviously the players um, have different. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Different uh, skill sets in terms of more relaxed, more chilled. Different, uh, obviously, environments and obviously backgrounds that they're coming from as well. So you put all that mixed together and. It's uh, you, you get different personalities, and uh, but from what I first noticed when I came in to work with the senior team, um, it's just a really proper group of lads that want to work well, do well for Ireland, and uh, hopefully that will happen very soon. You obviously have plenty of people around you at the moment for advice, but you know you've vast range of contacts. So who are the other people you've been tapping up over this week, the last few weeks, for advice on how to? approach this week and you know connect with those younger players yeah look I think that's where I just kept it in in my head um very simple in terms of the staff that I brought in and I thought that that was I didn't want to be because as you said look there's lots of amazing people and it'll be one of them um that I'll be able to touch into that uh connections afterwards as well in terms of uh the learnings from the two games as well and how you how you progress that will be a big thing too, but ultimately, I just wanted to focus on the staff and myself and the players, and not be worrying about too much outside uh, outside noise. Cheers, Good luck. cheers, mate. Ed Leahy. John, how are you doing? How are you doing, Ed? Week. Have you had a chance to think about the dressing room tomorrow night, putting that team talk, and then uh, in terms of, would you agree that maybe the job only really begins in earnest once that whistle goes, and how you can react to what you see in front of you and influence proceedings? Yeah, look, well, I agree in one sense, but disagree in the sense of obviously when we, you first get the players together and you're chatting to them the first time as well, that's a key key part that set the tone for uh, the week ahead. But ultimately what you said in terms of game time is, is the crucial part. And that's where the preparation comes into it, the final details exactly that we'll put in place today and then a kind of a switch off for the boys to relax and uh, focus. I think would be more sort of word focusing on the kick off tomorrow and the planning. And in terms of the uh, conversation or the uh, team talk beforehand tomorrow, look, that'll be straightforward in terms of what we'll be looking for, what will be needed from the players, and ultimately bringing it all together to get a big performance to win at the Aviva. And just in terms of the players, we've been hearing from them this week and it's all been complimentary um, towards yourself. Why do you think players really react and respond to players who are now managers who have played at the top level and really, um, you know, like yourself, just played in, the, in all the big games? No, look, it's, it's, look, I've worked under many managers that have played <laughs> at different levels or whatever the case may have been. And it's just you're trying to get a connection as soon as you can with the players to make them feel relaxed. Because ultimately, they're the, as I've kind of stressed a little bit, they're the key to everything. They're the key to performing. They're the key to winning matches. And you just kind of have to get that connection with the group to go on whatever team is selected. They're backing each other up no matter what. And as I mentioned, there will be 
it's the type of game, the intensity that's going to be needed. We'll be making changes at different stages that will hopefully maintain the strength of the team to maximise what we're talking about, that intensity for a full 90 plus minutes, as they say. Thank you. Thanks. John, how are you doing? Uh, how are you doing John? Tomorrow is your first game as a manager uh, and it's against the fourth best team in the world. Mm-hmm. Can you just try and put on the words how big of you that is and what you have in your career as a coach up to now? Yeah, look, it's a huge, uh, shall we say, task, but one, myself, the staff and the players have just said, look, what game would you want? We'd want a big game, we want a tough task. Um, and we have that with Belgium, as you mentioned, but also you have to have the belief and the plan, the structure, hopefully, that you know we can cause Belgian problems. Um, but fully respect, no matter what team or squ- uh, squad and team is selected, that they've good players all over Europe playing in top leagues, and that'll be a challenge when the team sheet comes through and you see who's up, who you're up against. Um, but one, ourselves and the players are relishing. A criticism from ex-internationals of the Irish manager you were part of last year focused on specifically the, the, the game in Athens and Poirier's decisions and the game in Dublin and Koeman's decisions. Was that fair criticism and what was your perspective? You were in the dugout and you saw these changes happening and I'm asking me about making decisions in games, in big games. But yeah, but look, that... Fair enough? Not that it's, 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 it's always going to happen when if you win, lose or draw, the, the, the questions of criticism... It's a natural, a natural thing, and you have to be prepared for it. That's ultimately what we do. We'll talk about a structure, we'll talk about a plan, but ultimately, if Belgium come up with a different shape tomorrow as well, or what they're thinking, we have to, you have to adapt, and you have to have the personnel, key personnel in place to whether you need a little break in the game or whatever it might be to get those points across as well. Um, but also a trust in your players that they can solve problems initially too, with the help of then. You have your analysts, you have your advisor, and then obviously information getting fed down from above. But if you can see it as quickly as possible on the side of the pitch, ultimately that's the best thing. Malcolm? Josh, um, you said earlier about playing Wheel that <coughs> players in that role tend to get noticed more when they're not playing. Is, is that a frustration that sometimes your, your good work can kind of go unnoticed? Uh, no, I don't think it's a frustration because I think um, <coughs> the people that, that really matter notice it. Um, in terms of the the management, the your teammates, um, the people that that are watching how the game is is really played. I think they they really sort of um, see the importance of of the role that that Glenn Whelan played throughout his career. So that's probably the highest compliment I can give to him um, in terms of how important that role that he played is for any team to be successful. Neil. Hi John. Uh, hey, Neil. You're asked there for the team talk. You're, you spoke about you know trying to get your points across or what you're looking for. Is there still room for that kind of impassioned uh, rabble rousing call before before a match from the coach? And I know Ryan was kind of famed for them. Is that something that you might look to delegate to him or? Um, I would look that at some stage, yeah, and obviously. Um, There'll be a point where, where Brian will talk to the lads, whether that's today in the hotel or whether that's tomorrow, whatever type of thing. But no, beforehand, it'll be myself talking to the players mainly, obviously. The detail we go into in terms of when we get the team sheet through, little pointers from the coaches, um, detail on that. And then it's out for the warm-ups. And then it's uh, it'll be everyone talking beforehand. The players in general lead a lot of it too, which is brilliant to see. And uh, as we mentioned, it'll just be the finer details, and there always there always has to be a part of that. I think in a, in an Irish dressing room, I think it's a huge part. Sure. Sorry to ask about Adam Eda. Um, he, he's taken a lot of criticism at various times. Uh, I know it took him a while to score his first goal for his country, but can you speak about his attributes? Like he clearly has a lot of his game. Can you, can you talk about those? Yeah, no, brilliant. He's uh, obviously great attributes. What a with a centre forward needs, um, the power and the pace, uh, his touch, and that control he can bring in in terms of um, locking defenders in, bringing other players in around him. Um, I'm sure he's obviously enjoying his time at the minute up at Celtic, work, working with the people he's working with, and uh, no, he's in a. He's in a good, he came in right from the start of the week, a great frame of mind, and he's um, he's in a good spot. And it's look, 
I've known Adam now for a couple of years and he's uh, he, he's got a lot in the locker. Gavin Kinn. Hi John. How are you Gavin? What do you believe is key to bringing out the best in Evan Ferguson in an Ireland jersey? Um, well, the main thing will be supply, um, get, getting them in the box. That would be the main thing if, if selected. The key thing for me is get him in the box where he's most dangerous, um, getting supply to him, um, and getting him to relax and enjoy his football. That's the that's the key thing for me, because um, he's got a bit of everything. You're talking about Adam. Evan is similar in that sense in terms of what he can do, bringing other players into the game, taking defenders on one v one, and uh, one of the most important things is uh, hitting the back of the net as well. So he's he's got a lot in the locker, and if you get him closer to goal. In between the the posts, shall we say, in the box, he's going to be a big danger to Belgium. Dan? Hey John, um, you mentioned uh, there that maybe earlier this week about making changes during the game and the full range of subs you have available, but are you committed in your head to to making all the changes possible, or if the result is poised, could you take a different approach? Like, is the result important for this game? Yeah, result is <coughs> result in, very important. Um, Obviously, you're, you're looking beforehand, performance, if I know the levels of performance are reached, that the result will be very favourable. And then it's your, that's the in-game management in terms of, is it a tweak to the system? Is it, and that, does that mean a substitution needed, a couple of substitutions needed, whatever time in the game that might be? But, um, oh, it's, look, the, your point is, uh, my point to you is, the, the game, the scoreline will dictate a lot of the substitutions, but when you look behind and some of the options that we'll have tomorrow, it'll be uh, they'll be very good options to have. Evan? Hey Josh, uh, you mentioned that earlier, it's a long time since November. It looks like it hasn't been a good time for you all talking about last month. What was that like and were you ever worried about coming in this week? No, I was never worried about coming in this week. No, I think there's a lot more things in life to be worried about than coming and representing your your country, something we all love to do. Um, yeah, of course, for any player, when you're not playing as regularly as you'd like, it's a, it's a bit of a tough time. But I also appreciate that's that's part and parcel of, of a footballer's career. Um, it's not always straightforward. You're not always playing. You're not always in the in the best vein of form throughout your career. But um, yeah, I think the most important thing for me was to to get a good run of games um, leading up to this week and. Um, yeah, hopefully if selected, I can I can carry on um, getting a good amount of minutes under my belt this week and uh, and performing well for Ireland. That's a, that's my main focus now. Paul, uh, John, um, just in terms of starts tomorrow, <coughs> Sammy Smodok's is formed, goal scoring form in the championship. Is that too good to ignore in terms of the start tomorrow? Possibly, yeah. But look, it's it's a case of that's where you're talking about when you look around on the bench in terms of the options that you could have in certain areas that there, there's a couple of players in form in, in that sense for certain slots so it's a, it's a decision we'll we'll get to very quickly um, but as I mentioned earlier the, the, the key things is the balance the balance in the team to make sure that you have enough to hurt Belgium but you have enough to control them as well so that's the key one for me. Ken? John, uh, as a player you were obviously known for the ability to play in Different positions. Why do you think you were more adaptable than most players? Um, <clears throat> well, look, it, it's. Uh, I suppose it came from a little bit. Would it came from an underage type of t scenario where I started playing um, on the wing, and then slowly migrated backwards. But I had a good, great understanding. It's just, I suppose uh, the manager at the time would have had a lot of trust in me and seeing my ability to cope with um, using both feet and just having a football and knowledge of understanding positions and a trust um, to do to do a job in certain areas. So you'd, I'd hope it was a, a bit of an understanding of the game. Are there players in this squad that strike you as having the same kind of versatility? There, yeah, there definitely is a couple, yeah, without a doubt. And that, that's going to be, I was uh, saying to someone the other day, it's not, don't worry, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, a bit of versatility uh, now and again. But no, I think the players know even, um, whether it be midfielders, whether you're saying a, a 6, 8, 10 scenario, the players that can flow from those positions, um, a full-back, potentially is a wing-back, a centre-back, 
could be a full back scenario too. So there is plenty of versatility in the squad and we definitely have a few players like that. Could a centre back be a midfielder? A centre back could easily be a midfielder. I think Ireland have a, a good history of that. Uh, John, the Euro players were on last night, I'm not sure which game you watched, I'm sure you were following them. Um, was there a sense of hurt, a sense of we should be there and it should be a minimum for the Irish team every four years to be at least in the playoffs and not in the finals? Yeah, look, it was one of them. Obviously, the games were on, and it's important. It's great to see the, obviously, the lads interested in watching football. You know what I mean? When you're in the camp and everyone's watching the games, we we were watching the Welsh game, um, whereas against Finland, and look, it's obviously hard because they are the, obviously, haven't experienced it. That that's what you want. That's what the country wants. That's what every player, every staff member wants. Everyone in this room wants it. So. I think it's a it's a key uh, thing to think about in terms of where you want to be and what we have to do to to get back there again. But do you think we should be there every four years at, at, at least the playoffs? Well, it, it's easy it's play. easy to say. Um, yeah, of course we want to be there. Of course we want to be there, and ultimately it's down to results and performances to get you there. Can I just ask another one, mate? Uh, doesn't mind. Um, what is it? Like, you're going to pick your own team tomorrow, you're going to your own tactics. Uh, hopefully it'll be a good result, a good result on, on Tuesday. But I'm just going to wonder, what are the benefits long term for Ireland? The new manager will come in and say, oh, I'm going to rip up what O'Shea did, I'm going to do something different, I'm going to pick somebody else. So what are the benefits that can come from these two games for Ireland? Ah, look, it, the key thing for me, like I spoke about, uh, Philip, at the start, in terms of uh, what we want from the focus of the two games, two good performances, hopefully that leads to two good results. And whatever happens after that happens, and that's that's where my focus and the staff's focus and the players' focus has been right from the off. Aiden and then John to finish. Hey John, uh, just one other team. I appreciate you haven't told the players yet, but uh, how difficult was the goalkeeper situation? And can you give us an indication of what you've what you've done with? No, look, it, it it's it's not it's a difficult uh, decision in terms of uh, the re with three really good goalkeepers in the squad, and obviously Brian Mars come in to support um, the keepers too, but. Um, the, the, Cuevin's playing at a level now which is very good Gav's been playing all season consistently well and obviously Mark um, started the season on Owner Stoke and obviously he's back now and played some cup games for uh, for Bournemouth so look it's a good Josh will tell you you see some of the training sessions that they're doing and the saves they make it's a, it's, it's a really healthy department but we'll just see what we uh, decision we come up with tomorrow I'm fine John John, you mentioned there about Evan and just encouraging him to relax. You know, like by his standards, he's going through a bit of a goal famine and scores since November. Like with young players, and he's a teenager. In that situation, is there a tendency for them just to be a bit anxious and maybe snatch a thing rather than be their usual self? Um, look, I, what I what I spoke about earlier in terms of um, the key thing for me, all good strikers, whether you're young or old, you'll have that spell in your career. You'll have that little spell of a couple of months without a goal and it's just getting back to little extra finishing sessions, little extra just reminders of what you're good at and reminders of where to be to hurt teams. I think that's the key thing for me and whether that's a player when he's in form he'll be doing those things as well and to keep that consistency, get your level of performance back up to where it should be. Thank you very much everyone. Training starts at half now.